for spiritual depression. One of the pieces, what is known as clinical depression, clinical depression is essentially a neurological uh, kind of experience in reality in that it is a result of a chemical imbalance within the brain that causes a emotional imbalance. This sort of imbalance can actually be best cured by medication. It's interesting within communities, particularly within the black and brown communities, that's often frowned upon using medication, but if there is a chemical imbalance within the brain that precipitates an emotional imbalance, one of the best ways to remedy that, I sent my friend is just through medication. And I've spent 23 years as a Navy chaplain, and it was amazing to me to see how many men and women in the armed forces who live daily under uh, the grip of clinical depression that often goes untreated. Uh, so we oftentimes I would encourage them to go seek out like, uh, help, medical help to help remedy that problem. The thing about clinical depression is that you could give all the pep talks you want, give all the uh, inspired speeches, but if there's a chemical imbalance, it's difficult to, to deal with that without some sort of uh, chemical help. Right. So it's not only is that we experience depression clinically, we also experience depression situationally. Are y'all still with me this morning? Uh, look at your neighbors and hear you where you want, want you to in a few minutes. <laughs> Today you can say, neighbor, neighbor, he's coming down your street soon. Situational depression, my friends, is one that is often indicative of what we experience uh, in our lives. I mean, most of us, if not all of us, have experienced situational depression, which usually comes by the loss of a loved one or a devastating diagnosis, the loss of a job or a major breakup. Uh, this, many of us, and I've passed this church long enough to know that most of you have undergone situational depressions before. I have also undergone situational depressions. Then there's another type of depression, which is what I call post-trauma, where some sort of trauma has happened in your life that results in a painful remembrance. Many of you who have experienced uh, any kind of traumatic experience in your life, whether it's through war, through personal situation experiences will undergo what is known as post-traumatic stress. And these can be remedied through therapy and counseling. So my friends, spiritual depression results from physical means of depression. In other words, in the midst of despair, we find ourselves struggling when we have lost loved ones, when we have undergone divorce or breakup, when we have found out that there is a disease in our bodies when we have struggled uh, with post-traumatic stress. When, and when we deal with those things, what happens is that when we're faced with those things, now we're confronted with whether or not, where do we find God in the midst of these struggles? And that's where faith comes in. Spiritual depression is when we can't find God in the midst of our physical circumstances. And so what happens is what we need is that in order for us to be spiritually healthy, y'all are y'all with me? In order for you to be spiritually healthy, you gotta first of all have faith. Preach Reverend Wesley. That's why Jesus says to Peter uh, in, in the book of in the book of Mark, he says, Peter, I pray that your faith will hold you. Because what you need is that it, when you are dealing with when you pray for healing and it didn't come, when you pray for renewal in your relationship and the still the break, you still face breakup and divorce. When you pray for the nightmares to end and they never end. When you pray for partnership and find and you still find yourselves lonely. When you pray for more money and you still find yourselves broke. When you when you pray for your children and your grandchildren and they seem still to be more disloyal and disobedient. And when this happens, we find ourselves on the brink and giving up and saying, what's the cost of living when we're about to have spiritual suicide? 
The reason why, the reason what is happening in the church often is that many times in the physical world when there is depression, suicide results when people give up, can't find a way out of their problems. Spiritual suicide happens when you lost faith in the God that's promised you, I never leave you nor forsake you. And so what I've come by to tell you that the way to get out of spiritual depression is, first of all, you got to learn to trust in God and trust in God's word. Is there anybody in this house that's ever been through a spiritual depression and you wonder if God has shut the door and closed the door, walked out on you and left you all by yourself, and you wonder even if God even exists? Y'all ain't praying with me this morning because, because, because I know if you're like me that no matter how many prayers you've given, how many times you got on the phone call, called other saints, still find yourself wondering if God is still there. Wondering even if God exists. You do know the Lord just gave me this. You do know that you can become a practical atheist. Wow. Yeah. 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 Wow. What is your name? Say, what's a practical atheist? <laughs> a theoretical atheist is somebody who claims and verbalizes that God doesn't exist. That's a theoretical atheist. Look at your name. Say, theoretical atheist. <laughs> Y'all stay with me because y'all sleep this morning, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to preach this sermon. I don't care how y'all, I don't care how y'all act right now. Y'all can act all quiet. I'm going to preach like everybody saying amen. I'm going to preach like the walls are shouting at me right now. Walls are preaching. Preach Reverend West. Preach Reverend West. Amen. Thank you, Walls and Electric Lights. Theoretical depression, I mean, theoretical atheism, is, it was when you claim and acknowledge God doesn't exist. A practical atheist will claim that God exists, but will act like God doesn't exist. Y'all ain't here. You, 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 you shout louder than anybody in the house. You get your praise on, but then when you go home, you wonder if God is still there. You, you live, you wake up every day in despair. The last folk that ought to be spiritually depressed ought to be saints. Because if you claim that you have faith in God, you ought to begin. You, that faith in God does not mean that God will remove every mountain, that God will take away every disease, that God will bring you out of every trouble. It's just the fact that knowing that you worship a God, they can do it. Preach yeah, yeah, yeah. Reverend Wesley. So, but then there is what I call the disease of discontent. I'm done. I'm about. I got five more minutes and I'm gonna let y'all out of here. Y'all should fight on this one. Plus my medicine is wearing off. <laughs> Sermon title. So Lord grant me the serenity to accept what I cannot change. Comes from the the serenity prayer written by Rhino Neighbor. It's a long prayer. But the clip of it is, Lord, grant me the serenity to accept what I can't change, the courage to change what I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. You know, they use this in Alcoholic Anonymous. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. I'm picking on nobody this morning. <laughs> Amen. I'm just, I'm, coach, I'm just trying to keep it real. I'm just trying to keep right, it real. Right. Lord, grant me the serenity to accept that, but I cannot change the courage to change what I can, the wisdom to know the difference. Yes, sir. They use it for addicts so that they can remember their inner strength. Yes. Can I stop and tell y'all that this church, that, that, that all of us, my mentor, Leo Gaskin Fisher, you once told me, this is about 15 years ago, she says, all of us are recovering addicts. Right. Amen, somebody. Right. Y'all proud of me. I'm going to keep on preaching my sermon. Amen. amen, Walls. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah, bless That's the name of Jesus. The Walls are saying amen to me right now. So that all of us are recovering addicts. We may not be recovering from drugs. We may not be recovering from alcoholism. But some of us recover from greed. 
Some of us are recovering from self-anger and endowment. Some of us are suffering, are, are, are recovering from, 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 from depression. Some of us are, are recovering uh, from all kinds of things. But then you ought to remember to ex ask God to accept the things you cannot change. Yes. Well, how do you do that? I'm going to ask. Look at the text. Paul says, there are three things I want to say about surrender. I'm going to let you go. First of all, I'm talking about mature to serenity. Secondly, I want to talk to you on how to master serenity. And third, I want to talk to you about the meaning of serenity. Well, here it is. Mature to serenity. Look at verse number 11. It says, For I am not saying this because I am in the Look at your Bible. Look at your Bible. For I learned to be content. The first thing you have to understand about serenity is that it's part of spiritual maturity. The reason why the saints that give up on God are those who are still trying to mature in their faith. When I find people, what happens is that a lot of times the folk that give up, a lot of times what we can do is that we come to church, we we, we, we zoom and we express a lot of platitudes and cliches, and we come to church and we shout, God is good all the time, ain't God good, and we won't even do it, we won't even work it out, and then we leave church, and 30 minutes later, it's just like Chinese food, you eat it, and then an hour later, you're hungry again. And, 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 and so the, the mark of the mark of immature spiritual people is that they can come to church, get their praise on, get happy, but then when they get home, then when they get home an hour later or the next day, they back to the same old stuff that they were in before they got to church. But the article, Paul says, look, the way in which you can become, you can experience serenity is that you gotta learn how to be content. Yes, sir. You got to grow up and mature, get into the word, get into God's word, spend time with God, trusting in God, leaning in God, being able to see things that God is doing in your life, even when you, even when nobody else can see them. He says, I've learned to be content. And then he says, he masters the He says, I know that what it is to be poor, how to have plenty, how to live under all circumstances and conditions. I know what it means to be poor and to be hungry and to have too little pause. Here's what he's saying. Look, I have been in situations where I didn't have money. And I was content. I was in situations when I didn't have a partner. And I was content. I was in a situation when, when the doctor told me that I have a terminal illness and even in the midst of looking at death in the face, I can still be content. Yes, yes. Are you in a day and you can experience the kind of contentment that no matter what the situation you find yourself in, you tell God, look, I'm still able to be satisfied where I am. I may not be where I ought to be, but thank God I'm not where I used to be. I, I, I'm going to learn how to be content. I'm able to face circumstances. Bring it on me. Bring it on, devil. Bring what you have for me because no matter what you got, God has given me the strength to still be victorious. You know what, you know what, coach? I used to, it dawns on me when I watch basketball, we just, we just, uh, we just eulogized Kobe. And, and what, what, what's tripping me out is that people like Kobe and LeBron James made millions of dollars playing basketball. And I'm like, man, no, no, hold up. I mean, why come I'm not in the NBA? <laughs> Amen, somebody. Y'all may not believe it, it's as short as I am, but y'all know I used to dunk a basketball, dunk a basketball back in the day. <laughs> Amen, look at your neighbor say, watch out, watch out, watch out. I used to be able to dribble between my legs and, 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 and throw it behind my back. I'm like, hey, look, I can do what those guys can do. <laughs> Y'all no, no, look at me like y'all, no, no, no. don't hate on the brother, don't hate on the brother, amen. Look at your neighbor say, don't hate on the pastor, don't hate on the pastor, amen. I, I could dunk the basketball, yeah, but with two hands, I can even do it behind my back sometimes. I don't, I, don't, don't trip, I, I used to be able to do it like that. I used to be able to shoot long jumpers all net every single time. But you know the difference, you know the difference, uh, uh since the between me and Kobe and LeBron? Is that I can do that on the court by myself. <laughs> But you can 
somebody against me and playing defense, ain't none of that stuff gonna happen. <laughs> That's why I'm not in the NBA. <laughs> Amen. Because I, I can do it by myself, but when I got competition, right, right. the difference between me and Kobe is that Kobe can still get 40 points with a six foot seven guy standing in front of him. Yes. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying that the, that the best kind of space are those not the ones that can endure trouble uh, when they're having it. Not those who can who can be faithful when trouble is not in their way. Those who can come to church when difficulty is not in their way. Those who can stay faithful when problems are not in their way. But let some problems and some trouble come. You want to see the saint that is mature? It's the saint that says, bring it on trouble. Bring it on difficulty. Bring it on problems. I'm still on trusting God with all my heart and with all my mind because I serve a God that would never leave me alone. change. The word serenity means peace of mind. I'm done. I'm done. When the best kind of saints are those who will be in the midst of trouble, in the midst of a storm, in the midst of difficulty, and still act like ain't nothing going on. And no matter how much hell going on in their life, they still say, I'm still going to serve God. No matter how much trouble they got, they said, I'm still going to give God the praise. No matter how much difficulty in my life, I'm still
content. That if we are hungry, we can be content. When we are without it, we can be content. When we got trouble coming all around us, we can be content. When our friends have left us, we can be content. When we have stepped to stand alone, we can be content. When our relationships have ended in breakup and divorce, that we can be content. God, someone, someone under the sound of my voice right now is dealing with the, the difficulty of discontentment, the disease of the discontentment. God, we pray right now that you reach out in a mighty way. That you trust him in a way that only you know how. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.